Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to do it. How to technically take super macro shots. All right, I have my setup here. First, we have to find a suitable subject. And before we even go diving, dive site selection is important. We generally prefer dive sites with minimal or no current, minimal surge because we have to hold very still, dives that are shallow so we can take our time working the subject and not uh, you know have plenty of time dives that are easy to navigate so we can concentrate on our photography and not where we are on the dive site and it's really helpful to have a supportive understanding dive buddy who will put up with you or even support you okay now subject selection obviously this is super macro we want to find either a very very small subject or we can find a larger subject, but just get a small portion of the larger subject. Of course, in my case, I like focusing on the eye. We can also take subjects and make abstract images. Now, this is super macro. We must get close. And what does that mean? The subject must be approachable. So we have to find subjects that are relatively stationary, at least for periods of time. We must also be stationary. All right, um, we have to hold our camera very still. We need either really good buoyancy or if we're going to settle on the sea floor, you know, we have to do it very gently. We don't want to cause backscatter. We have to make sure it's a sandy bottom so we're not damaging any life or we can use a stick or a fingerprint, uh, fingertip to, to rest ourselves. Now, it takes time to focus and work the subject so the subject has to be cooperative and know when to stop. Don't stress the subject out. Okay, now backscatter and background issues are less important. Remember, this is super macro. Sometimes the background can be an issue. Backscatter usually is not. There is so little water column to illuminate, and there is very little depth of field as well. So most of the backscatter is going to be very blurred. Now, tips on approaching the subject. First of all, no damage to the reef. We approach the subject slowly. When I'm trying to get a good shot of the eye of a fish or the eye of an invertebrate, I will first look elsewhere. I'll try to ignore the animal. And if I do start to approach, I will not look the animal in the eye. For some reason, that seems to spook them, okay? I'll take my initial shots at a distance, adjust my strobes and look at my histogram and LCD. Then I will gradually move in if they're not um, afraid or scared or swim away. I will allow the subject to sort of get used to me. I'll move in gradually. If it's a mucky bottom with some backscatter, I'll try to settle very slowly or even down current. So any uh, muck I do stir up, instead of blowing toward the subject, it's going to blow uh, toward me uh, and not toward the subject. But that's not always possible. Now, if I'm making adjustments in my strobe position or my aperture, um, or checking my LCD, I'll try to back off a little first before I do that. It's so frustrating when you get a few shots and then you move your camera to look at your LCD, that scares the subject away. So sometimes back off when making adjustments. Now, if the subject cooperates, work the subject, experiment with different strobe positions, camera settings, um, apertures, things like that, but know when to stop. Now, let's talk about the, the camera settings. It's pretty straightforward, and that's what's cool about super macro photography. The ISO, simple. Keep it as low as possible. Our strobes are providing all the illumination. We don't have to worry about balancing foreground and background lighting and everything like that. Just keep the ISO lowest. That maintains the highest quality. For the shutter speed, simple. Keep it as fast as will sync with your strobe. Usually 1 to 200th of a second or 1 to 250th of a second. Simple. The aperture. We generally have such little depth of field with super macro photography. We want to keep our aperture relatively small in general so that we can have a better shot at getting something in focus. I usually set it between f between 25, f25 and um, f30 to something like that. We don't want to make it the smallest because then we can get a blurred image from something called diffraction. And we can always experiment. We can open our aperture a little bit to blur the background even more. But just keep in mind the depth of field is extremely shallow, virtually non-existent with super macro. Now for focusing, that is the most difficult part with super macro. And I have a, an angled viewfinder, which is nice. And you don't have to hyperextend your neck, especially if you're on a sandy seafloor. And I will usually use continuous autofocus. But the camera doesn't necessarily know what part of the subject I'm really focusing on. It doesn't know what my subject is. So I tend to push a button, focus lock. I will lock my focus, and then I will move 
in and back and forth, very, very small amounts, taking a few shots while I do this. I'm sort of bracketing my focus and hoping that one of the images comes out tack sharp on exactly what I want to focus on. For the strobe settings, I usually keep my strobes on TTL, but you can also set them on manual and just check the histogram to make sure you're getting pro relatively good illumination. And you can use one or two strobes with or without diffusers. The strobe positioning, we have to pull them in tight, and you can do it straight ahead if you're emphasizing detail. If you want to emphasize texture or topography, we'll put them at the side and get that shadow uh, effect. We'll talk about that more in the next video composition for super macro. So I hope this is uh, helpful. Just a brief outline on technically how to take super macro pictures. Thank you for tuning in.